us to put this briefing together to just give an overview of the work that the Laos Contractor Consortium engages in and, uh, and give you just a little bit of, of insight. Um, last year, when the laboratory announced that there were going to be 100, or I'm sorry, 1,000 positions uh, through the volunteer separation package, there was a lot of media attention uh, focused on that. And in the end, uh, the, or the end result was that we had about eight, a little more than 800 employees that took the voluntary separation package. So uh, we had those jobs that were reduced. What you didn't hear about was the impact that was then made on the subcontractors, which is the next tier. Uh, we represent 30 of the largest subcontractors to Los Alamos, but we are also the 30 of the largest uh, businesses in northern New Mexico. And the impacts to the laboratory, we're tied at the hip with them. Whatever impacts the laboratory will also impact us. And so last year, during the time that the 800 individuals were leaving the laboratory through the voluntary separation package, those subcontractors had 1,000 additional uh, employees that ended up losing their positions. So I thought that it was very important that everyone understand the level of impact that is tied uh, with the contractors to the laboratory. And sometimes you don't always get that second tier information. And so that's what I'm going to try and share with you today. So who are we? I already mentioned uh, who we are regarding the contractors. Uh, they are contracts that are in value, uh, a value of $5 million or greater. Uh, we represent right now about 1,000 employees and we have about $266 million in revenue per year. Um, because of the $5 million uh, value contract, we also have a requirement in our contracts for reinvestment in northern New Mexico. And so each contractor then has to reinvest from their profits into the northern New Mexico region. And this is in uh, three very specific areas. Economic development, education, and community giving. And so we mirror uh, what the focus is from the laboratory's perspective and our partners with them. So the organization was established in about 2004 and it was specifically to allow the contractors, after we had all uh, tried to do some economic investment uh, in a, from a singular position for a few years and we saw that the task was so great that we were not able to really have the, the kind of impacts that we were wanting to have. And so the whole idea behind putting the, the contractor or the consortium together was to try to give us a venue so that we could leverage the funding that we had and that we, so that we could make greater impacts on the community. And so that's specifically why we were put together as, a, as an organization. Each of the contractors still has a requirement to make investments in education and in community giving. But those uh, investments are done largely uh, on their own and in a singular position. The economic development investments are done collaboratively. So uh, what kind of investments do we make? Well, we put a grant pool together, and so everyone makes contributions on an annual basis. And to date, we have uh, given out in grants about a little over $200,000 um, in what we do is we focus on those organizations, nonprofit organizations, that help cottage industry in rural New Mexico because that's who we are. So what we're talking about when we say investment in economic development, we helped with significant funding in the Santa Fe Farmers Market. We helped with significant funding in the Española Fiber Arts Center. We helped with significant funding at the Task Community Kitchen. And there's a lot, a lot of different types of investments in, in different groups. The artist studio tours, we help with their advertising in a collaborative effort. And so I wanted to give you the link, and I think it is in your packages. You can go to YouTube and take a look at a video that was produced in the summer of uh, 2011 that gives you a little more insight with regard to our partnerships with the communities and who we fund and the impacts that we've had. So this is the first slide I want to share with you, and this is uh, education. And you'll start to see the trend develop as the slides go by. Right now we have data that's been available uh, since 2009. We are in the process of collecting data for uh, last fiscal year, and so we're going to start to see the, uh, the level of impact. As I mentioned, that uh, we are very much tied to the laboratory, and so when they are successful, we are successful. And when they are hit from an economic standpoint, so are we. And that um, impact has very, very far-reaching um, impact when you look at the slowdown and who is impacted by that. 
uh, laboratory employees are impacted, subcontractor employees are impacted. And then when we don't get task orders because there's procurement that's been held back by the laboratory, that also has an impact, of course, on our ability to have lower tiered subs, which are a lot of the small minority and women-owned businesses in northern New Mexico. And so that impact keeps on rolling. It also impacts in our investment. If we are not making money, it becomes very difficult for us to make investments in the social fabric of our communities, and that includes education. So you will see the numbers from 2009, 10, and 11. In 2010, of course, this, there was a, a peak, and we'll see that a little later on as well. That was during the stimulus money, and so there was quite a bit of money that was available. Uh, in 2011, that went down, but it was still a pretty good year for us. Last year was when we had all of the cuts, and so congressional uh, economic impact on New Mexico is quite significant, as we've been hearing all day. This uh, shows you community giving and volunteer hours. So again, the top slide shows community giving from 2009, 10, and 11. Uh, you will see a continuing downward trend for FY12. Uh, as I mentioned, we're in the process of collecting that data right now. That also reflects volunteer hours. These are the organizations, again, it's, it's United Way, it's our Big Brothers Big Sisters, it's um, the Boy Scouts of America, all of those organizations that we volunteer for. You know, when we re are reducing our employees, the number of volunteer hours also go down. So volunteer hours right now you're seeing uh, 09 and then 10 and 11 as well. That represents in three years about 10,000 hours of volunteer service. The average is about 3,000 hours per year for the for our consortium. This is our economic development impacts. So again, you will see in 2009 uh, our numbers, and th that reflects the, the total. The green line or the green bar is the total. Uh, the red is in-kind contributions. So there are times when we will uh, provide experts, uh, where we will go in and, and provide um, some level of, uh, of donation and materials. And then also we, of course, in the blue line, you will see monetary or cash donations. And so again, you will see that this trend, now right now, because for economic development, for most of the investment, our investment is always a year behind, because we'll see what, what amount of work we've done the previous year and then make the investment for the next fiscal year. And so you're going to see a downward trend for FY12 as well, because in FY11, you're seeing the investment from the impacts of FY10. So this is probably the most telling slide of all of the slides that we have uh, presented today because this is the next tier of subcontracting. So you heard the numbers earlier about um, the amount of revenues that the state has been collecting from two years ago and from, and from last year. This downward trend is going to continue for 2012. So this is subcontracting that we do. This is third tier. The, con the laboratory contracts the prime contractor, co contracts the subcontractors, that's us. And then when we have the work, uh, the task orders issued, we contract the next level. So this is reflecting the kind of contracting that we have done, subcontracting for our lower tier. And again, that trend is going to continue to go down. Now with sequestration on the horizon, we have all read, I think, in the newspaper yesterday that Lionel is not anticipating a further cuts regarding employees. But if sequestration does happen, and I think we all know it probably will, they are going to have to hold back on procurement because that's the place where they can really manage their, their cash flow. And that means they're going to be less task orders for us, and that means we won't be able to hire subcontractors either. So this downward trend is going to continue. So, any questions about the slides that I showed you or any questions about our organization? I didn't see um, any giving for environmental protection. What are the environmental protocols that the subcontractors follow? Uh, the, in fact, the contractors that have been hit the hardest with regard to cuts has been in environmental remediation. Uh, we do have a number of contractors that are part of our organization that are focused in that area of expertise. And uh, we've actually, they're, they're the ones that have been hit the hardest with regard to their employees. We have some reports from then, and again, I remind you that we're still in the process of uh, data collection, but we have received reports from the uh, environmental remediation companies that they have reduced their um, employees, some of them as much as 80% from 2009 to 
from the beginning of 2011 to current uh, FY13. So um, that's work that is being issued by task order through the laboratory that then goes down to the, sub the subcontractors to produce. And when the task orders don't come, the work doesn't get done. And of course, that's all tied to congressional dollars. Any questions? Oh, I'm sorry, Council. But wasn't, um, th thank you, Mr. Chair. But wasn't that expected? Because the stimulus was a huge project to clean up uh, T21, and I mean, it's done. It so was expected that there's a 200 or $250 million dollar project that is a one time activity. It's uh, true that we did have. It should have been expected. It is true that we did anticipate the peak. But there were also plans for following follow-up years for them to be continuing uh, money that was budgeted, and it was approved. Those budgets were approved for uh, for continuing that remediation work. But instead of those budgets being uh, managed and and slightly going up as the years go by because of the m amount of work that needed to be done, those actual budgets are going down, and so that's reflected in that slide. Thank you, Commissioner. That's my oversight. Welcome, Commissioner. Thank you. Any other comments? I have another question. Another question? Um, what is the impact of the current status of the CMRR development on the subcontractors? Well, we had anticipated a significant amount of work, as everyone knows, with the CMRR project because it was put on the back burner. Uh, a lot of the investment for the preliminary work uh, is just now sitting flat. There is no work being done. We've lost a, a number of expertise. Uh, a lot of people have left the state. And uh, even if we do end up getting that restart after five years, it's going to be another huge investment trying to get move, move all of these experts back in. Uh, so we had quite a bit of investment in uh, trying to prep and, uh, and get all of those workers in the pipeline. And, uh, and of course, now all of that is uh, just at a standstill. Well, I'd, I'd like to, if there are no further questions, I, I want to really express our gratitude for you welcoming us uh, as partners. We are very, very excited to be working with the coalition. Uh, I think we have a singular message, and we, I think that when all voices speak as one, it's more likely that we will be heard. Uh, we want to continue to work with you as wherever you feel that it is appropriate for us to do so. And I uh, would like to actually invite you to come to our next meeting and share some of the work that you are doing with our membership. So that, uh, that invitation is, is coming down the pike, and hopefully in, uh, in April, if it's appropriate, we'd like to join you in, in D.C. Very good. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. You.